Chi Memorial Institute for Medical Research. Both individuals returned to Ghana from Norway and Turkey. So these are imported cases of COVID-19. And ever since then, we've been recording cases. Towards the end of last year, uh, we saw a decline in the cases, and that made us let our guards down. But now we're recording more cases, more deaths as well. Have we been able to manage the situation as much as possible, even before we head into the budget review for today, Mr. Kujapuku? Well, we did well in the first and second part of last year. Mm. And I think towards the election, there was agitation on what to do. Mm -hmm. And I think we didn't have an option because we really had a train that has to get to its destination in terms yeah. of the constitution and the mandate it puts on us to hold the election. Mm -hmm. So we sort of um, let go the guards, did the campaigning, and did the election. Mm -hmm. But for me, I think right after the election, when we have done the necessary, we should have basically put a halt on gatherings. Mm. Around the 15th of December, when I saw some of the activities that were being advertised for the Christmas, I yeah. was a bit surprised. So I sent a few texts to a few people in government and I asked, are these things allowed? And they said, yes, as long as they adhere to um, COVID-19 protocols. Yeah. But the problem we have when it comes to social events is how do you adhere to COVID-19 protocols at social events? Mm. And you're looking at uh, big outdoor events and stuff like that. Maybe the person will use sanitizer. Mm -hmm. The person will wash their hand. But the minute they get into these social functions, they have to drink. You can't drink with this mask on. So you yeah. take the mask off. Mm -hmm. Then there's loud music. You see a nice girl, you want to collect a phone number. How do you collect a phone number with this loud music without getting closer? So you have to get closer, talk to the person. Mm -hmm. And that socialization, after two drinks, everybody is mingling as if there's never been corona. Yeah. And because the social media was showing Ghana opened, and the UK and the Europe were in lockdown. Most of the young ones jumped into the plane and came to Ghana for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And that is where the serious variant, which has already now come up in Europe, yeah. was now brought into the country. Look, most of the people were detected positive at the yeah. airports. Yeah. There are instances where people have been known to pay okay, mm -hmm. and come out. Yeah. There are instances where people have been taken to the holding center where after a day or two, they've been asked to go home. Mm -hmm. So we did that to ourselves. So then from January, the spike now came back again. And that is what has led, to, led us to where we are today. So yes, as a nation, we did very well in the first part. But I think after December, we basically just went to sleep and allowed this new variant to come in, which is much sharper and much difficult mm -hmm. to control. And that is what is really running wild within our communities now. Could the country uh, have survived without elections, first of all? Because, again, that conversation came up and we were told that it shouldn't even come up at all no. because there's no way we could have survived no, without we it. Couldn't have. And that's even where everybody sort of let their guard down because we realized that if politicians could go around rallying uh, without recourse to the COVID-19 protocols, then the regular Ghanaian thought it was okay to go without my mask, to gather and all of that. Do you agree? Yeah, I agree. Um, we couldn't have gone down without election. Even after election, we all saw what happened and mm -hmm. we saw the court case that recently ended. Mm -hmm. MPP and NDC, they are really not playing ball and looking at the common good of Ghanaians. Yeah. We'd have had a serious constitutional crisis. We'd have had various issues. For, for me, I'm glad we had a peaceful election mm -hmm. and Nanado was declared president. So we can move on as a nation. But um, you are right. If the politicians have gone around because I on Twitter mentioned it mm -hmm. that ah, the youth had the ones who have gone partying and immediately I was hit with ah, but politicians have gone out and done what they did. You mm. guys never said anything. Why are you now coming to blame the youth for this? So yes, the blame is on both sides, both the politicians after election. But I think we should have locked, do a semi lockdown mm -hmm. after, around the 15th of December. But like we I should said, have. We should have. We should have. After the election, we should have did a, not a rigid lockdown, but the president should have come out to say that, look, if you want to do Christmas, do a toned down Christmas, mm. cut down the parties, the outdoor events have to stop. If those measures were in place, we would all the death that happened between January and today. Mm -hmm. And as, as you can see, I'm in black. I yeah. mean, I've got two deaths in my family in oh. the last one month. So um, it's a problem. It's yeah. a big challenge.
But let's look at what has been done in the last one year since we recorded COVID-19 and the fact that we received some hundred million uh, dollars from the IMF and the World Bank as well to supplement or to help us manage the situation. And then we went on lockdown. Well, it was a partial lockdown in Greater Accra, Greater Kumasi. And that alone came with a lot of challenges from people being, not being allowed to go out and even get food. People were being harassed on the streets and all that. And then also the breakdown of monies that were spent. First of all, for cooked meals, hot cooked meals were told we spent about 12 million Ghana cities. And then there was uh, another 40.4 million that was used to distribute other um, you know, food items to people. And that also raised a lot of concern. How did we spend so much money on just food is what Ghanaians were asking. As against all the other things that we did, PPEs were in short supply. We now had to look within. Looking at the $100 million that we are now being told has been completely used up, do you think that we managed the finances with regards to COVID-19 uh, well? Well, look, it's, it's a difficult place between a rock and a hard place. Mm. Um, Ghana, for me, has become a socialist country because at any juncture, government has to come in and provide for the mob and for those that don't have. Mm -hmm. But when you're doing some of these interventions, it should be more targeted than otherwise. Mm. The free electricity, okay? Mm. Sorry, the free water. Yeah. The 50% electricity. And free to some extent. To some extent for some people. You know, those who are below the lifeline. Yes, yes right. Lifeline free is okay. Mm. But for me, the 50% electricity should have been more targeted. Okay. Industries, companies that were suffering. Because... If you look at the well-to-do in this country, most of them have companies. Mm. So if you are giving that person a 50% discount in his company or his shop, mm -hmm. that's fine. Those registered as uh, business customers with ECG should be given the 50%. Mm -hmm. But then to now do a blanket 50% for everybody, for me, I had a challenge with. Because okay. there were people with six air conditions, five air conditions in their houses, who do not need that 50% discount. Mm. There are people, government workers, heavily affected. Their money is not enough, and they are going through hard times, okay? okay. They, they don't consume much, okay? So you could have used the unit consumed to target the discount, to okay. say from zero to maybe 150 units, 50% discount. That would have been. Anybody consuming more than 200 units, for me, I don't think needs... 50% discount. But COVID affected everyone. Yes, it did. It, it did, status. but you see, if COVID affects everyone, and we rightfully agree, when do we need that money more? Now that we need to procure vaccine, mm -hmm. or then that everybody is at home? Now we need to procure vaccine. We don't have the money to procure vaccine. Mm -hmm. We are now being told that we need to go and find more money to procure vaccine. Mm -hmm. So there should have been a 360 view of that. Look, this is going to be around for a while. The little money we have, mm -hmm. do we just spend it and look for more money to just spend? Okay. Or target and restrict the spend expenditure? Because bear in mind, people think that government spends money and by a magic wand, the debt goes away. Mm. Me and you pay for that debt. Yeah. So yes, it's good that it's given to us through free electricity, but at the back end, we still have to pay. Mm. So for me, like I said, the water was fine. Okay, water was fine. Water was but fine. But even with regards to water, there were challenges. Not everybody benefited from Well, not everybody water. has water. Mm. So for me, I mean, not everybody has water. I mean, how many communities in really getting water really in Accra? Mm. Most places get water once a week or twice a week. You'd be lucky to get twice a week. Mm -hmm. In my area, there's no water. You understand? Mm -hmm. So for me, the water situation was not something I really... But electricity, because of the challenges thereafter... And now, and I'm sure we'll go into those discussions yeah. and what we are seeing across the country. Mm -hmm. Electricity for me, going in to spend that much, that much money with the problems that exist. Because look, in the whole year, there was about 1.3 billion expected revenue. Mm -hmm. ECG could only collect about 592 b b million. Mm -hmm. Okay? So about 400 or m almost uh, 500 million of that money was not collected was lost. So it's not an area that 
if we're looking to see how we spend our money, the food, yes, we can put a pen and paper to find out how much, how come food costs this much. But we all saw that the food went out to people who mm. needed it. And there are people who, were, who didn't have food. Mm, yeah. Even in the U.S. of A today, we see food lines to food banks yeah. where people, they are not poor, they have jobs, but they're out of work. Mm -hmm. They live in a big house, but they have nothing to eat. So they drive their car and queue to go to food bank. Yeah. So if the government gave out food, for me, it's nothing wrong. But it's how much was spent for food was. Yes, but you can do the calculation and give and take. If there's transparency for us to see the numbers, then we can have that discussion. But for me, giving food out was not a problem for me. Okay. My challenge was the electricity. Even though it was about 54 million, which was quite on the high well, side. Well, we agree it's on the high side because <laughs> I don't think it was Santoku that was giving out. But mm. what I'm saying is that we, we can only interrogate that when we have the numbers and it's been made available. And me and you can look at it and say, okay, why is watch you costing 30 cities mm. you know but now we don't have it so if that was spent on food we, it's difficult to interrogate it further though on hindsight we, we think the number is quite big there was a supplementary budget eventually even after we had exhausted our budget um you know for that year there was a supplementary budget of about 11 percent or so 11 million um dollars that was also granted in parliament after the then finance minister uh, delivered the, the budget review in Parliament. Now the question is, what has been done with that? Because we're still in, you know, the process of probably exhausting that budget, hopefully. And the question has always been that we do not have a detailed review of all the expenditure that has gone into 2020, and yet we're asking for a supplementary budget. Are you expecting that to be given today as, you know, the budget is going to be read? It should be. And mm. it's always given. You see, there are two types of the documents that is read in Parliament. Mm -hmm. What the minister stands at the box to read is only a summary. The detailed budget is given to Parliament. Mm. So if you want, it's even on their website. There are appendices upon appendices and upon appendices. So anybody who wants to go and drill down the fine details can go after the budget is read, can go to the Ministry of Finance website and mm. look for these details because every single penny spent is recorded. Mm -hmm. And the people whose job, me and you, people's representatives are who? The parliamentarians. Yeah. They are the ones that have been voted into parliament to make sure that they keep an eye on the government purse. So that is why the budget is read. That is why they go into the committee meetings to drill down on these expenditures. Mm -hmm. So they are the ones that are supposed to take a pen and paper to now do this calculation on our behalf. Mm -hmm. If they don't do it, then they're not doing their job well. What are your expectations today with regards to this budget that is going to be read? For me, I think the government should go into helping private sector. Okay. Okay. We've always said that private sector is the engine of growth, and without private sector, the country cannot move on. The pandemic has affected most companies that were very profitable. Mm. And what has happened is that the government needs to come up with proper plans on how they intend to support these companies come out of the red. Mm -hmm. Because companies that were making profit are now making losses. Mm. And most of them has laid off most of their workers. Okay, yeah. So because in Ghana we don't have the dynamic data for unemployment, we don't really know how many people that were made unemployed during the pandemic. Mm. We don't know how many people that are going to get back to work now that system things are beginning to seem normal. But we know from what we see around us that most hotels and most institutions have gone down mm. and they are hardly uh, full capacity. So government needs to come up with a program for private sector. Now, somebody will say that, ah, but the president has said that through the banks, they are going to give X amount, NBSSI and mm -hmm. all that. Look, let me explain. In the banks, the president wants to give money to institutions through the banks. For me, that is flawed. Why? Because the banks don't just dole out money. For the bank to give you money, there is a set of guidelines given by Bank of Ghana. Mm. Okay? The Bank of Ghana stipulates that. For me to give you one CD, you need to give me 120% collateral before I can give you one CD. So you need to give me a collateral worth 120 CDs before I can give you one CD. Hmm. That's the law. That's the regulations from Bank of Ghana. 120% collateral before I can give you money. Money, yes. Now, most of these companies were already over leveraged with the banks yeah. before pandemic. Hmm. So most banks have overdrafts with the banks. Most banks already borrowed from the banks. 
And if you go to the banks, they'll tell you that rate of default on loans has gone up because the companies are not making money to pay back the loans. Okay? Mm. So if you are saying that these same companies who already are defaulting on loans with the banks should go to the bank who he owes and has defaulted to access funding, the bank won't give him. Because as per the existing guideline, if you default on loans, it goes against your credit. But we're told we're not in normal times, and so shouldn't that have been... Thank you. So those are words. What the government should do is to sit with Bank of Ghana and say that, look, let's have a special dispensation mm. to help these companies. Let's not use the normal um, processes. Let's not use the normal lending criteria, mm. okay, in assessing loans going forward. Mm -hmm. Because if I said, if I owe the bank and I've defaulted, yeah. I can't assess new credit. Carry on, carry on. I can't assess new credit. And for me to assess new credit, it means that I have paid off, kept up with my payment before I can assess new credit. Mm -hmm. Okay? But now, we are, like you said, we are in a new situation. So if you come and say that I'm giving money to the companies, to the banks, just those words does not help the company. Mm. So you need to have special regulations in place to help these companies assess these loans from the bank. Mm. Without that, they can't. Because government is saying that I'm giving companies money through the banks, and they go to the bank, and because of their existing loans and debt with the bank, they can't assess new money. But the only way they can come out of this hole, this indebtedness, is if somebody gives them the money for recovery. So I think there should be a special program where it's done outside the normal lending criteria to help these companies to come back into profitability. So for you, the NBSSI has not been that helpful as we expected? The NBSSI is for small Smaller. to medium yeah. scale. We are not talking about small, mm. medium. We are talking about big These institutions. Large businesses. Okay. We are talking about big companies that need bigger money than what the NBSSI can mm. give. Mm. Okay, so MBSSI is for small to medium. Yeah. That one is, yes, they've done some, they've done well, that's fine. But for me, if we are looking for regeneration, reinvigoration of our economy, big companies, big institutions need to be given the support. Yeah. They are the ones that will employ people. They are the ones that will now create the vibrance in the economy. They are the ones that pay the big taxes. Okay. But now, they can't pay taxes because they're making losses. Mm. So government needs to help them. And in this budget, I'm hoping we will hear something on that. Secondly, for me, I think if we are going to now do the right thing, there should be some level of austerity. Okay. Okay? We can't borrow, 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 and not do anything about it. I'll be expecting to hear some austerity. Mm. If the government feels that pandemic is still on, and I don't want to do austerity, mm. okay? I'm going to kick austerity maybe into 2022, 2023. That's fine. But then my thinking is that then we should give Ghanaians a raise in salary. Okay. Okay? All right. So, well, yeah. All right. Let me just quickly introduce Dr. John Kweku Mensa Mauto. He's the Dean of Graduate uh, School at UPSA. He's just joined us this morning as well. Good morning and welcome. Fine. I mean, you were nodding when he was talking about um, you know, austerity and all of that. But today, the budget is going to be read. First yeah. of all, what are your expectations? Yeah, um, thank you, Bella. Um, I think for the, uh, for the whole of this week, we've been talking about the budget. Um, mm -hmm. Sona was presented by the president mm -hmm. and a lot of issues were mentioned, especially some promises that um, has been made already, some which were also recycled into the soda. But basically, um, one of the areas that some of us are so much concerned with is the fact that the continuous dwindling of the government revenue uh, has so much cause to be concerned with. And then the fact that we don't expect that the government should introduce any taxes mm. and once you try introducing taxes either, either new or increasing mm. in in an era of crisis then you don't seem to uh, be committed towards um, um, shelving the burden on, on, the, on the private sector you know private sector has always been said to be the engine room of, of every, any economy and, and for that matter 
and we expect that there will be some expansion in the private sector through the incentives that the government will be providing, um, as well as some creativity. I'm so much particular with creativity. You know, um, COVID-19 naturally had, had, had uh, sent some companies packing out of business. Yeah. And for that matter, we will need some level of creativity and innovation um, where people have to change their line of operations, their line of product. And obviously, there are several opportunities uh, available in, in a number of markets. So um, for those budgets, we, we all know, I mean, we all know that uh, the, the government will continue to operate a deficit budget, and then we will be expecting that some loans will have to be contracted to get the economy moving. Um, but Bella, the, the one of the unfortunate things I, I observed from the president has to do with the continuous promises. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I thought the president would be so appealing, but uh, he continued with the promises especially I'm, I'm a bit scared that uh, unless there's something that probably the president have that we don't know um, we will still be having issues with our revenue mm -hmm. and for that matter we should be measured in the things we really want to do um, I'm happy to say that um, yes indeed some efforts have been put in place to ensure that at least the automobile industry uh, a number of companies have been brought on board. At least it will ease out some of the uh, unemployment uh, that has that, that probably have created because of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. But once again, it goes with some expertise. Uh, some industries will require some expertise for uh, the average Canadian to be employed. Whilst coming, I, I was so, in fact, listening to my colleague, um, the issue of data is very, very important. Today, do we have any site that you can probably cruise to to assess the level of uh, the number of unemployment uh, recorded as a result of COVID-19 in all the sectors. Mm. We don't I don't think we do have. So going forward, I think it is time. It's a gap that I think uh, uh, even uh, academia must probably come on board. We don't always have to trash everything to the government. It is, it is I mean, this is a country. We have to do everything possible to solve issues, problems. Mm. And we need to work on data until you know you can solve. If you don't know what is wrong with you, there's no way you can get a medicine to cure yourself. Mm. So data is very, very important. Today, I mean, um, when, when, if you am to ask you, one of the devastated, I mean, sectors is, is tourism. Mm. And day in, day out, they are complaining, um, the fact that they have laid out their workers, they've lost revenue. They are, I mean, some are, even those that are operating will tell you that we are operating below capacity. And that is the, the most hit sectors in our economy. And it's one economy that also employs a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and, and, and we all know you don't need so much skill to work in the tourism sector, so the, the hospitality sector. And some of those people, whether we have alternative jobs for them because of skills. Mm. So you may be creating more jobs, but you may not have the required skills in the immediate term to close that gap that, that was created by. Uh, the, the, that's COVID-19. So um, I'm not expecting so much from the government. However, the economic recovery program that has been mentioned by the government, so about Tampa, um, Ghana Cares, yes. <laughs> Ghana Cares. Mm -hmm. um, I was happy to hear that uh, we are now transitioning into commercial farming. And that, that's good okay. because uh, I've, I've always mentioned that uh, one of the unsung heroes of um, the first chapter of Nana Kufado's government is uh, Dr. Efri Yakutu. Mm. Um, even though we have issues with this public uh, posture, especially when he's granting interviews, the way and manner he responds is always a problem. Uh, but if you want to be realistic and be truthful to what is done, he's been very creative and innovative in the sector that was given to, entrusted to him. And each and every time you could see his pro proactivity that even before the budget is read, he has a document, a policy, and a policy is always important for governance, that he wants to commercialize farming, and then the fact that there will be some agro-processing agro companies that has been rolled out, we just expect that all those things will come on board mm. so that it will ease out that pressure which was brought by COVID-19. I mean, it's, it's, it's important to know that the youth today will do everything possible to, I mean, and something yeah and going into agriculture and the way and manner we are projecting agriculture i can tell you 
four five years uh, come to come, now. I think uh, Ghana will be a provider of food. I mean, we may probably create that basket that may even um, um, feed our entire country, our uh, neighbors, as well as mm -hmm. Africa. But the president already said that even in his sauna, in a way, yeah. that, mm -hmm. you know, there has been no food shortage, um, you know, in a while, of course, because we've been focusing heavily on agriculture, planting for food and jobs and all that. And even talked about, yeah. you know, the increase in yield in tomatoes yeah. and all that. That also came with some backlash because uh, a lot of people were concerned and they were asking. <laughs> Not too long ago, we saw the, uh, you know, importers of tomatoes complaining uh -huh. about security uh -huh. and the fact that traveling to Burkina Faso, they have not been provided with security. security. And yet the president is here saying that we've increased our yield so much that there's not been a need to import some of these products into the country. Yeah, these are the realities. Um, you know, governments work with averages. Okay. Um, once again, data. Do we have data to really verify the specific uh, net exports that mm. we are talking about? Um, I'm very happy that uh, the media took this issue up because we asked the first, when, when the uh, Mr. Designate mentioned the fact, mm -hmm. the, the fact that, yes, indeed, Ghana is not a net exporter of some products, not yeah. all products. So eventually you have some of the products, but let's be realistic. Um, has there been food shortage in this country for some time now? Mm. There will surely be some compliment from other regions. I mean, the guy cannot tell us that uh, everything was, was uh, all the targets were met. But on the average, we could say that I haven't really heard so much of that shortage in a while. Mm. At least uh, food prices have been a bit stable. Let, let's face the fact. Some prices will surely um, escalate a bit. But um, today when you go to the market, what, what is the average prices of the products you buy? Mm. We are talking about food security. We are talking about food pricing. It is important to know that food security is what every government should work towards. And I want to use your medium to commend this government in terms of agriculture, even though we have other issues we have to discuss. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm so much into the way and manner they are rebranding agriculture, where you have the youth today going into agriculture providing incentives for the youth to go into agriculture. That is what we want. Because, you see, um, look at the economy of the Netherlands, mm -hmm. as well as Israel. Israel is basically into agriculture. Mm -hmm. They have mechanized agriculture. And, and they are even feeding their countries in, their, in the sub-regions. If, if this is what we really want to... Because, I mean, if, if I'm fed, I don't think I, I, I will be so thinking about so, so many things um, it, 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 it even brings people out of the street. Once mm -hmm. I have food to eat, I don't need to overburden myself. So the issue of food security is very, very important. It's even a topical issue mm -hmm. on the global market. The, the world has, pro has projected that Africa will, will have shortage in food. The, I mean, there will be serious food shortage in a, in a part of the world. And the globe as a whole, COVID-19, it will take some time to work on, I mean, narrowing that gap. So if Ghana is so, focuses so much on food agriculture, then I think it is an area that uh, we, 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 we are doing well. Okay. Ha however, um, uh, sorry. Um, uh, uh, Land on this for me so I can go to... Yeah. To um, go. The, my, my problem has to do with some of the fiscal policies. Um, I, I, I hope that uh, we don't increase too much... We don't focus too much into expenditure. Uh, we need to manage our expenditure very well and then not to raise the expectation of, of, of workers. Mm. Uh, one of the unfortunate statements I heard the president making has to do with uh, uh, introducing professional allowance for teachers. Mm -hmm. When at the time, I mean, at the time that we still have some allowances outstanding, and as mentioned, this is a panacea for agitations. Yeah. Don't raise the expectation of the people in the midst of crisis. Mm. Mm. And, and that's what Mr. Angel Kabonu has been saying as well, that uh, thousands of teachers have not received their arrears. And so they're looking forward to the budget, including that as well, because there's a need for them uh, to get them. And also the fact that in the senior high schools, since schools reopened, uh, they have not received food from the buffer stock. And there have been challenges in feeding children um, in the schools. And so they're worried and they have even threatened that they would have to make a decision moving forward if 
um, you know, the Ghana buffer stock does not come to their aid. But the Ghana buffer stock has also said that they are making sure that they can provide food to the schools and they're working assiduously towards that. So let's see if that's going to be included in the conversation. But Mr. Kujibu, let's go back to the issue of energy, um, you know, and... Over the weekend, the country was plunged into total mm. darkness or almost total darkness. Gridco came out, explained that there were some technical difficulties. They could not really tell what exactly led to it, but they were working to fix that. And as if that's not enough, now we're also experiencing an increase in fuel prices in the country. And this is a time when we all do understand we're not in normal times, and so things could go a little off. But at the same time, Ghanaians are worried. We're losing our jobs. We're not making as much money, and yet life is even becoming more difficult for us. We have to probably uh, live with doom so for the next couple of months or so. We're not even sure where we're going with this, and now we have to pay more fuel yes. as well. What do you say to this? Well, it's unfortunate. Um, from January to now, four prices have gone up by 27%. 27? 27 percent from high. January to now. That's quite high. Um, the average Ghanaian has not gotten any support or any relief as towards that. When prices of four goes up, everything goes up. Mm. So commodities, four, look, name it, it goes up. Now, like I, I said before I ended on my last submission, mm -hmm. there are two ways this budget can go. One, austerity, let all us tighten our belts and cut down the expenditure and Ghanaians will understand that we've spent and we need to gradually ease ourselves out of that um, debt. Yeah. If not, Greece will happen, mm -hmm. right? But if the government feels that we need to spend, 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 then let's not only spend on infrastructure. Let's give Ghanaians relief. Then mm. let's give pay rises to gov government workers. Because if there are increases in petroleum prices and government can't do anything about it, then by all means, what government can do something about is increase the salaries of Ghanaians. So for me, it's two things. If we think we need to borrow and do infrastructure, because governments seem to think that, and I'll get back to the electricity mm -hmm. question. Let me just make this a quick point. Government seems to feel that we borrow and do infrastructure, and it will create some level of um, enrichment or uh, empowerment in terms of finances. Would it not? No. Most contractors, if you know any contractor, call him right now. All contractors are broke mm. because government don't pay them timely. Mm -hmm. So because you borrow and you do infrastructure projects, roads and building contractors, you don't pay them on time. So because of that, the small money they are supposed to get is dwindled by interest from borrowing. Mm. So if you're going to borrow to do infrastructure, then pay contractors on time. If you don't pay contractors on time, it's negated. By the time you give them the money, the uh, money they are supposed to, the profit has been eroded by interest on mm -hmm. the borrowing that they did. So that is just a quick point. Yeah. If we want to borrow, then borrow for everybody. Let's give Ghanaians some relief. And not because for infrastructure. Not, not just for infrastructure. Mm. But if we want to do uh, austerity, which is what is needed, yeah. then let's do austerity across board. Cut down the expenditure, like my brother said, reduce the promises, and mm. let's face and get out of this uh, problem. The electricity sector. Mm -hmm. The power sector is facing challenges because Gridco and ECG has been neglected in terms of the necessary infrastructure finances that they need. Mm -hmm. Gridco last year and the year before has been demonstrating, has been talking a lot about money owed them. Nobody seemed to care. Mm -hmm. ECG, we all agree, needed about $1 billion investment. The U.S. through Compact 2 was supposed to provide about $400 million. Mm -hmm. The government through concessionary agreement with private sector participation was to attract $600 million into the distribution sector. Yeah. Along the line, PDS happened. We all know what happened. Then we canceled and abrogated PDS. As mm -hmm. a result, the Americans felt that we are no longer going to give you the rest of the Compact 2 money. So they held back about $150 million of that money. Yeah. Then the $600 million that we are supposed to get from private sector as a result of the PSP mm -hmm. did not also come in. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, rough calculation, you have not gotten $750 million that you have admitted you need to revamp the distribution. Two, three years down the line, nobody's talking about it. But government has said that they have even paid ECG, um, you know, in excess. You see, of those, those are indebtedness. Mm. People who owe ECG. ECG contractors were agitating. Ministry of Finance found money and paid ECG mm -hmm. workers. We are not talking about that. We are talking about new infrastructure. New bulk supply points, new transformers, new electricity lines, transmission and distribution. Mm. Those new investments, which we have all agreed since 2015, 
six years ago that we need one billion. Mm -hmm. We've only done 350 million through the Millennium uh, Challenge. Mm -hmm. They gave us 350. Yeah. We lost out of 150. So that is what is coming to where we are. In this budget, I will want to see what money government is putting into the power sector. Let the Ministry of Finance stop this talk of buying back debts from IPPs. Mm. IPPs are private companies. They went and borrowed their own money and put up their plans. They don't want you, government, to buy the debt. Okay. There's this talk of government, and they actually went ahead in the last bond, euro bond, mm. borrowed about $800 million to try and use GIF, Ghana Inve Infrastructure Fund, mm -hmm. to buy back the debt from the IPPs. And the IPPs are resisting it. Mm. They don't want that process. So instead of doing that, let's renegotiate. If there is the burden of high interest on their lending that we think let's try find a way but one we can't continue trying to do this we are going to convert take or pay to take and pay we know that that can't happen because the ipps are resisting it mm. we know we can't buy back their debt because IPPs are resisting it let's focus the money we have into building our infrastructure transmission and distribution mm -hmm. we are going to have light off and these localized problems for some time to come. For how long? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Let me tell you why. We are going into the rainy season, and this is a yearly event. Mm -hmm. In the rainy season, there are winds and the trees and stuff disrupt our electrical network. Yeah. So we are going to have that. But those are localized problems. What ECG should get ahead of is to have more men on the field mm. so that when there are fault reported, they attend to it better. So the customer service, customer feels that, oh, yes, I had a localized problem. I called, they showed up to resolve it. That will give comfort. Mm -hmm. The transmission needs investment. We need to build backbones, alternative routes. Let's say Kosovo to Kumasi. When there's a fault on that line, yeah. a lot of places will go off. We need to find money to build alternative routes. So if we can send power through this line, we can route it through here. Mm -hmm. Those investments will take time. So this year, I, and I'm not kidding you, mm -hmm. this year we are going to have a lot of transmission and distribution agitations. Hmm. It doesn't mean that doom so, as everybody likes to call it, is back. But it is just that we need to solve that problem. You, when you are building a huge water pipe, yeah. you shut a lot of areas off and build a pipe. Mm -hmm. The same thing. If we have to build high transmission lines, we have to shut a lot of places off for maybe do a timetable for maybe two weeks. Yeah. But the government needs to get ahead of this and tell Ghanaians that, look, this is my program for the year. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do that. And as a result, these are the disruptions we are going to get. If Ghanaians have that message, the politics will come out of it. Um, Doc, so <laughs> there's Agenda 111. Uh, okay. And of course, health infrastructure. Thank you. And Kutubu is talking about the fact that we need to invest heavily yeah. in the energy sector. Mm -hmm. But we hear a lot more about the investments in infrastructure, okay. you know, for education, for health yeah. and all that. And not as much for the energy sector. Are we getting our priorities wrong? Or is that also very much needed? Because if you ask Ghanaians what really they want, they'll talk about roads, schools, hospitals. And so is that probably the reason why government is focusing heavily on some of these things? And are we getting it wrong? Okay, if, if my memory serves me right, I think uh, uh, Agenda 111 is just a recycled promises last year. One mm. of them. Uh, mm. The hospitals. Yeah. Weren't it was told, 88 and then they moved it to yes, 111. Uh -huh. yes. Weren't you told some 88 hospitals to be built in this Yeah. Country? Has it started? I think the, the media can probably talk about it. The sword has been cut for okay. some of them, we're told. Has construction begun? Mm. Okay, these are questions we need to ask. <laughs> 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 but you see, um, th these are ambitions. These are something, I mean, some vision that the president wants to execute. Mm -hmm. However, um, I think we should be looking at prioritizing our capital expenditure at this point in time. Mm. I'm, I'm very happy my colleague mentioned that. You see, when it comes to capital expenditure, we have that, that investment, one of them that will probably generate income. Mm -hmm. okay, we embark on such expenditures which will turn out to generate income. Some are purely social. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, at this crucial moment, um, if we have government embarking on 
capital expenditure which will not generate any revenue within four or five years. Mm. Some will not come out with any revenue, income at all. Um, they are indirect. I mean, you, I mean, you, you just presume that um, when I build, when I construct roads, when I build schools, mm -hmm. uh, I'm educating my, my, my populace, and for that matter, in 10, 15 years to come, they will, they will be equipped, they will be capacitated to work, yeah. uh, conduct research, and then develop products for you. That is the social one. The benefits are derived some years to come. Mm -hmm. Now, um, we do not have money to embark on such uh, 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 projects. projects. Mm. We are borrowing, interest accruing to be paid. Currently, our income doesn't measure up to our expenditure. Yeah. The first quarter alone, we are talking about uh, requiring over $2 billion to, I mean, augment our, our expenditure. expenditure yeah. um, the projected budget for 2021, which was, which, which was part of the uh, transitional budget, mm. about $23 uh, uh, billion. We need all those monies to augment our expenditure. Mm. So if we want to really embark on projects, the projects that will expand the private sector, let's hold on with social projects for now we are mm. in crisis in fact even the, the the developed states are looking at how to empower the people the u.s economy have budgeted 1.9 trillion mm. just to just to help the unemployed just to help the the small scale businesses and also help some businesses to i mean to to, to, to survive within this uh, a moment of crisis. Mm. These are things we are talk talking about. Austerity measures. Yes. And please, let's not think that it is only government that is obligated to ensure that things work in the moment of crisis. Okay. Each and every stakeholder in the country is also responsible because he, and, and I also don't please expect land on this workers for me. union. I'm being I, don't, I, 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 I don't want to expect workers union to be agi agitating for increment in salaries. In salaries. This okay. is not a time to do that because we, we, we have a country to protect, you have a country to run, you have a country to sustain mm. our little income that we Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. And we'll have an extensive conversation on the budget to be read later yeah. today at 10 a.m. Uh, this is just, you know, a tip of the iceberg. So look forward to that. I've been speaking to Dr. John Kwekume Samalto. He's a dean of graduate school, UPSA. And uh, Mr. Kojo Poku is an energy expert. Thank you so much for your time. Right, thank you. This morning. TV3 New Day still continues. We'll have a conversation about abusive relationships mm. and marriages. When should you walk out? Don't mm. miss that conversation coming up. And some more sports and entertainment as well. Keep watching.